Hi, I'm Adam in Wales and this is another in my short series of reviews of games that I picked up last week at Essen Spiel Convention in October 2016. Now, the fact that I picked it up last week means that these games haven't, I haven't played them extensively, although this one I have played quite a few times now, um, and it's the game Coin Quest. I'd like to thank r, &R Games very much for the review copy. Um, this is a deck building game, or, or more to, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of pool building game, where we're adding things to a bag and then drawing them out. In this case, coins and it's got it's it's an interesting mashup of of deck building and blind bidding auction type mechanics let me show you in coin quest players place blind bids in an attempt to win valuable coins each player starts with 10 coins in their own colored pouch six copper three silver and one gold each round every player draws five of their coins randomly from their pouch and places them behind their screen they will use these coins to bid on several different lots the top three lots on the board each contain a new coin which may give the player a special ability or points in addition to its value. The bottom lots provide victory points only. Players distribute their five coins behind their player screens according to the lots that they wish to bid on, then simultaneously they reveal their bids. For each lot in turn, the player's bids are compared. The highest gold value sum wins the space. If tied, you then compare silver, and the highest silver value sum will win the space. But if there's still a tie, then copper values are compared. If the space is totally tied, no one wins the lot, and if it's a lot in the top row, the coin will remain for the next round. Winning players mark their points on the score track, or take their new coins and add them to their personal discard pile, along with the coins that they've spent. The players who won lots may now each spend three victory points to purchase one of the coins from the market area. These coins are never refreshed, so once the market is emptied, it no longer has a function. Three new coins are now placed onto the lots, and each player draws five new coins from their pouch for the next round of bidding. If the pouch is empty at any point, all the coins you have in your discard pile, they're all returned into your pouch, hence coins that you purchased become available to spend later in the game. Additionally, drawing coins from the pouch can activate special powers, allowing you to draw extra coins or remove less useful coins from your supply. After several rounds, when all coins have been purchased, players remove all the coins from their pouches and add together any points indicated on the coins. They also score points if they hold the majority of the coins with crowns or with scepters on them. These points are added to the score track and the highest scorer wins. Now I found this idea quite intriguing, this, um, because with deck building games, you know, we are purchasing things from a marketplace, and so it sits very well with that idea of, of an auction. Uh, and it's a clever idea, and it's one that I haven't seen done before. The fun in the game, of course, comes from outguessing your opponents, deciding, do I put lots of gold on this in order to win it? But then maybe I might just win it with a little copper, because everybody's gonna be thinking that they're gonna be going for that. So. He knows I might go for it, so he won't go for it. So maybe I won't go for it and I'll go for something else. All this sort of bluffing and double bluffing and double think, uh, that's where the fun is, and then seeing if that pays off. Now, with deck building games, they're often criticised for being multiplayer solitaire. So um, what that means is that one player essentially plays by themselves. They're buying things, they're adding them to their pool, and they're trying to build a better and better deck that works more and more efficiently, so their turns get better and better throughout the game. But essentially, in doing that, they have very little impact on the other players. Now, that is not the case in Coin Quest. This is extremely interactive. It's the opposite of multiplayer solitaire. So as one player gets better and better, their bag fills up with golds and special powers and things like this because they've done well in those initial auctions, then they have a huge advantage over the other players for the rest of the game. And actually, you can find that players can get shut out of multiple rounds because they just don't have the good coins from the early rounds in the game. So this is a game that with larger player counts, four or five, can generate a bit of a runaway leader, or more to the point, a runaway loser. You can find people getting shut out if they're inexperienced in the game and they do badly in the initial rounds. So I would say at higher player counts, this is a game really where you wanna play with people of a similar experience with the game so that they can spot which are those really valuable coins in the early rounds and make sure that they don't get shut out of the game later. 
Um, with lower, smaller player counts, you know, two players, three players, it's not such an issue uh, because there are enough spaces on the board that even if you have really good sort of coins, you're unlikely to be able to gather everything on that board and so the other players can kind of catch up. Um, so I would say it works very, very well with two to three players. Once you get up to four to five players, I think that that runaway leader thing can be a bit of an issue if you're not experienced with the game. Now, that said, it's an easy fix and I've actually started playing a variant when I'm playing with new players where that marketplace, um, which everybody can purchase from at the cost of, you know, three victory points. I've, I've started playing that actually you can only access that marketplace of coins in the bottom row if you haven't won any other lots. Okay, so this now does provide a catch-up mechanism for people who have been shut out. The only way you can access those coins is if you haven't won any other lots, and actually I don't charge any victory points for them. So essentially if you win no lots, you can take a coin from that marketplace and it doesn't cost you any victory points. Um, it, you, we go in turn order, in, in player order of the player with the least points, they get first pick, then the next player, and so on. Um, it's not essential. If you're happy with a game that is not very forgiving, that really does benefit the, the experienced players and the players you know, who, who, who do the best in the early rounds, then, uh, then that can, you know, this is fine. This is not, this is, you know, if you don't like catch-up mechanisms, if you like a game which, um, which really does benefit those, those players who do better, then, then this may be the game for you. Um, I, I like a game that's a little more forgiving, I guess, uh, where, where, you know, even new players have a chance all the way through. Uh, other things to notice about the game, uh, the theme is kind of, so as with all deck builds really, it doesn't really matter. Uh, here we're collecting ancient coins uh, and, 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 you know, valuable coins, that sort of thing. The artwork is this sort of caricature, grotesque artwork that's going to appeal to some people, not to others so much. It doesn't look like every other game on my shelves, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your point of view, I suppose. Now, with these uh, deck builders that do away with cards and instead use coins in a bag, so the other big example is Puzzle Strike by Serlin Games. Um, essentially, this, function, this would function as a card game. There's no real reason for them to be coins, apart from to immerse you in that atmosphere of coin dealing and bidding and making them into money. And it works quite nicely for that. It does feel like money, but it does come at a slight cost because they're harder to handle than a deck of cards. They're harder to shuffle. They tend to clump together a little bit in those bags. And also because there's less room on the, on the coin than there would be in a card, so sometimes they can be harder to differentiate. And I've played with a few players who have some issues with the colours, you know, finding it hard to distinguish between a copper and a gold, um, sometimes because of colour blindness and sometimes just uh, that processing difference that we all have, you know, some people find it harder to see those distinctions than others. So it would have been nice to see some different symbols on there. Um, overall, I would say this is a really interesting game. I think uh, it'll work well for some groups and other groups, I think, might struggle with it a little bit more. So I think carefully, but if you love deck building games and if you love auction games, this is quite an ingenious mesh-up of the two. Um, it's certainly going to stay in my collection and I'll be playing it a lot more, uh, I'm convinced. So, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. I think it's the first review I've seen on Board Game Geek of CoinQuest, so hopefully it's given you some idea of what it's all about. Uh, I'm Adam in Wales. My YouTube channel is Adam's Board Game Wales. Please subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Board Game Wales on Board Game Geek. I'm Adam78. So thank you very much for watching. All the best.